Good morning and welcome to worship at North Springfield Presbyterian Church. My name is Tara. I'm the pastor here. A few announcements for the life of the community. This Wednesday at 6 is our community dinner. It's free. Everyone is invited to come. And we also have our yard sale coming up. What's the date? Okay, and where should they put their stuff? Over in the, uh, the line. Yeah, the overflow. Yeah, the overflow sign on the main building. In the, in the Christian Education Building, mm-hmm. which is the building right down the street from this. And that's where we will have coffee hour following the service. And I hope all of you will join us. Are there any other announcements for the life of the community? Yes? All right, thank you. All right, let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Stand now if you are able for the call of worship. Sing to God a new song. Make a joyful noise to God all the earth. Let us join in our prayer of confession. God of mercy, we confess that we have not borne the fruit of the Spirit. We have not loved others as you have loved us. We have denied the promises of baptism and cut ourselves off from you. Forgive us. Restore us that we may abide in your love, live out your mercy. For the sake of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. 
Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Because we serve a God who is patient and willing to forgive, you are forgiven and may now be at peace. Peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. for a chat with the pastor. Yes. Oh, great. No. Yeah, Lori, what's the, what's the name of the hymn that we're doing for the baptism? <laughs> okay, I should have moved this out of the way. Yes, you may. Would anyone else like to come up? That's fine. You can you can also sit in your seats. You come up front, then you get big Sam. Yeah, he's bait. Uh huh. Oh, good. Melissa's coming. So today we have a really special story, and it's about a little boy named Samuel. Yeah. Yeah. When Samuel was a little boy, Hannah, who was his mom brought him to live at the tabernacle. She promised God that Samuel would serve him all of his life. The priest, Eli, would now take care of Samuel. He would teach Samuel about God. One night, while Samuel was sleeping, he heard a voice say, Sam, Samuel. He ran to Eli and said, here I am. But Eli said, I did not call you. Then Samuel went back to bed. Samuel heard a voice call his name two more times. Each time, Samuel ran to Eli. Finally, Eli told Samuel, I think it's God speaking to you. Next time, say, yes, Lord, I'm listening. Then Samuel went back to bed. Samuel, Samuel, the voice said again. This time, Samuel answered, yes, Lord, I am listening. From that moment on, Samuel gave messages to God's people. He was a special prophet of God. Let's pray. Gracious God, who loves us all before we even take our first breath, we ask that you would help us all be like Samuel when you call our name to say, Lord, here I am. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming, everybody.
Our first reading today is from the book of Isaiah. It can be found on your pew Bible on page 646. Hear these words from the prophet Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent. So he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. Yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living for the transgression of my people, and he was punished. The Christian scripture this morning is Acts 8, 26 through 39. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, 
get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is called the Wilderness Road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come up to Jerusalem to worship, and he was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you're reading? He replied, how can I understand unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb, silent before its shearer. So he does not open his mouth, and his humiliation, justice, was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from this earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask, does, your, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak. And starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, look, here's some water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop. And both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went to, on his way rejoicing. Philip found himself at Azus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns. This is the word of the Lord. So uh, some of you might not know this, but I was born in Ethiopia. No, my parents weren't missionaries. I'm also a eunuch, which is not so great because that puts me at a very low rung in society, right there at the bottom. However, my job is to keep track of all the queen's money. So I'm kind of lucky that way. You should see my chariot. It's decked out. Got a little place for my iPod up there. Great speakers. Dolby surround sound. It's pretty, it's pretty good. So I decided to go up to Jerusalem, as I normally do, to worship. And so I'm headed up this road. And it's not a road that you really want to be on at any time, but especially after dark. There are thieves on that road. People have lost their lives. So it's one of those places that it's not so great, but it's a shortcut, so I often take it. There was another man who met bad fortune on that road. You may not remember him, but he got beat up really bad and Two pastors walked by and crossed the other side of the road. Didn't help him. And then another man who is higher up than me in society, but still pretty low on the rung, stopped to help this man. Yes. And the man was from Samaria. So this road is a dangerous place. But I have my chariot, so why am I worried? I mean, sure, the drivers might be at peril, if somebody jumps out to steal money, but not me, I'm good. So I go up to Jerusalem to worship. But the hard part is, I can't go into the actual temple. And there are four places ahead of me that people can go. The people who were born Jewish have one area they can go. The Gentiles, who are also called God-fearers, they have a place where they can go. But as a eunuch, 
I'm forbidden by Jewish law of going anywhere near the temple. I'm not allowed in. But again, my good thing is I got the queen's money. And today, I think I'm going to buy a scroll. And they're very expensive because it takes a long time for people to transcribe them because they do it all by hand. No printing press yet. So I buy this scroll, promising to pay back the queen later. You know how that works. And I start reading it, and it sounds really interesting, but I'm not sure exactly what it means. And, well, you know, I'm on the wilderness road, so probably none of the thieves are going to stop and explain it to me. But then all of a sudden, I notice this man, and he's running to my chariot. I thought, that's strange. I wonder if he looks like a thief. Well, he doesn't really look like a thief. I'm not sure what thieves look like, but he doesn't really look like one. But I noticed he does a really strange thing. He looks down at his Fitbit and says, I wonder if I'm getting all my steps in for the day. And as he's running up to the chariot and asking me to stop, I stop. And I tell him, can you make any sense out of what I'm reading? Because I don't understand it. By the way, hi, what's your name? And he says, Philip. And Philip was a deacon. And does anybody remember what the deacon's job was in the early church? What did the deacons do? They served the people, but their, what was their, the one main thing that, they, that was the most important part of their job? I'm sorry? Maybe. Anybody else? Maybe. It had something to do with widows. They protected the widow's food. Remember, people had a really bad habit of stealing food from the widows. That's pretty crummy, right? Like, who, who does that? <laughs> but people did. And so the deacons, the original deacons, the task that they were given was to watch over the widows and not let people steal their food. So at coffee hour, they were good. So that was Philip. And God had called Philip to meet this man in this chariot. And so Philip begins to explain, oh, this is Isaiah. He was a prophet. Or she, we really don't know for sure, but we assume. And this is what this means. And then he begins to explain the story of the gospel and Jesus. And the interesting thing about this passage for the eunuch is, do you remember what that passage talks about? It doesn't talk about nature. It doesn't talk about coming into wealth. What was that? The lamb. And what happens? Yes. But this passage also talks about experiencing humiliation, judgment, oppression. That probably really resonated with the eunuch, I would think. And so here is this person who's never heard of Jesus before. But the scroll that he has, has things on it that he recognizes. And it was very possible that the eunuch understood that somebody else had suffered too. Someone else had been humiliated and judged and oppressed. Somebody had been made to feel shameful about who they were. Somebody who was on the margins and the outcasts of society. And that's what God gave the eunuch to read. So after this story, 
This is one of those stories in the Bible that get really interesting. So at the end of this discussion, does anybody remember what happens? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. The eunuch. Mm-hmm. Yes. So they come up on some water. And so the eunuch says, oh, well, what's to stop me from being baptized? We have some water here. And that's always fun to think about for our modern church today, especially as Presbyterians, because we would say, well, Mr. Eunuch, um, you see, you need to have a class, and we need to talk about it, because we need to talk about the vows that are going to be said, and you're going to say, and I'll say to you. And then we need to meet with session, because the session needs to approve the baptism. And that may take a while, because they only meet once a month, so we'll need to get on the docket. And then after that, we'll set up a time with the pastor. That may take a couple weeks. You never know for sure. And then once we get all that done, Mr. Eunuch, we can baptize you. Because surely that's what God intended, right? But that wasn't the case. So Philip baptizes the eunuch in the water. Full immersion. Allison and Brigham, don't worry. I'm not going to do that with Sam. And then he comes up out of the water. New and clean, forgiven of sin, and brought into the love that's already existed for him of God in Christ. And then as they're going along, Philip gets snatched out of the chariot. And that's one of those things as a high schooler, I was just a thorn in the side of my youth pastor because I would say, "Um, okay, so about that story, how exactly did Philip get snatched away? Did somebody come and take him? Did he really just fall out? How did he get snatched away? That doesn't make sense to me. And my youth pastor would say, I'll go do some research. And now with, you know, the interwebs and Google, uh, that's not always the best way to do it because sometimes you come up with crazy things. But, so we have Philip who responded to God's call and ran to meet this eunuch in this carriage. And Philip didn't have any apprehension about going to somebody who was so different from him in almost every way. Not to mention, the eunuch worked for the empire. He worked for the queen. We're still in that same, that same time where the uh, Jewish people and the, and the Christians were being oppressed. But Philip just hops in the chariot, takes a look and says, He doesn't tell the eunuch to go do any research, fortunately. He just reads over the passage and says, oh, this is what it means. And then we have somebody who begins to feel the love of God. Something very different from the shame and humiliation and judgment that he's always felt by society. May we be like the eunuch open to God's love, open to reading things we may not understand and seeking out help when we need it. May we be like Philip, who listens to God's call and doesn't give a list of why he's too busy. He just goes. And when he gets there, he doesn't give excuses about why he can't do what he's been called to do because of how this person looks or how, what he's driving, or chariot. He just does it. And may we all be people who reach out to those nearest to us and some who are far away and share the love of Christ. Please pray with me. 
Holy and mysterious one, may you take the story of Philip and the story of the eunuch and seal it on our hearts as a reminder that you are a God of love and you are a God who brings hope to people who have been shamed, freedom to those who have been oppressed, and love to those who have never felt loved. In your name we pray, amen. join me in the affirmation of faith. We trust in God, whom Jesus called Abba Father. In sovereign love, God created the world good and makes everyone equally in God's image, male and female, of every race and people, to live as one community. But we rebel against God. We hide from our Creator, ignoring God's commandments. We violate the image of God in others and ourselves, accept lies as truth, exploit neighbor and nature. <clears throat> Deserve God's condemnation, yet God acts with justice and mercy, deem creation. You may be seated. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. You lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks and praise to God. Please join me in singing the Lord's Prayer.
Today we will be doing communion by distribution, which means it will be brought to you at your seat. When you receive the bread and the cup, please hold on to them and we will take it all together. On the night he was to be, be betrayed, Jesus had a meal with his friends. He took the bread and after he blessed it, he broke it, saying, this is my body given for you. When you eat it, remember me. And in the same way, he took the cup, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, remember me. Friends, every time we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we remember the saving death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, until he comes again. The servers, please come forward.
the cup of salvation. Thank you. Thank you. Please join me in prayer. Almighty and merciful God, by the gift we have received in this sacrament, may we produce the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now. Amen. As you leave this place today, may you give voice to the silent, may you give strength to the weak, may you hear one another, and may you see one another, and may you love one another, because it's all that easy 
and it's all that hard. And now, by the grace of God, the power of Jesus Christ, and the comfort of the Holy Spirit, be with us all, now and forever. Amen.